So let's cross a true breeding purple flower with round seeds. That's two traits, purple flower, round seed, and one plant. With a true breeding white flower with wrinkled seeds. Again, one plant, two traits. So it's going to be these two trait cross. Let's see what kind of gametes these form. Well, the gametes produced by the double homozygous dominant are only going to be the dominant alleles. So just P and R, just one combination, one possible combination. Here's the gametes produced by the double homozygous recessive. They're only going to contain these recessive alleles. Now, if we combine these two together, so we've got the gametes. Let's take these gametes here, the big P, big R, and combine that with little p, little r. Look at all the offspring. All of the offspring are going to be double heterozygous. That's your F1 generation right there. Let's look at that. There's our F1 generation. While these gametes are combined during fertilization, all of the F1 will be double heterozygous, and that's what double heterozygous is right there. Hmm. So when this F1 generation uh, produces its gametes, there we go. <laughs> there are four possible gametes that it can produce. Big P, big R, big P, little r, little p, big r, little p, little r. Those four possible gametes. Uh, let's see what happens when we self-fertilize the F1 generation to create the F2. So I wonder what the F2 is going to be. We're going to need a much bigger Punnett square because we're going to be combining all these four gametes. Of course, all those four that we see there, and I don't have to write them out, with those same four on this side. So that's going to be a fairly large grid. Let's take a look at that grid right now. So we've got our double uh, hybrid cross is what this is called. It's a heterozygous crossed with a heterozygous. Let's walk through this. We can see the whole thing here. So we're going to need a 16 Punnett square to do this. So we've used some coloring of the squares just to show you what each of the offspring are going to be. These are all the potential offspring. The light green shows both dominant phenotypes expressed. So all of these light green are when both dominant phenotypes are expressed. So quite a few of those. You can count those up and see how many of those there are. You go ahead and count them up. So the genotypes contain at least one big P and at least one big R. So there's nine of them, as you can see, out of the 16 have both purple flowers and round seeds. The light yellow right here, this means only one of the dominant alleles, alleles in this case, the, the big P or the purple color, are present. So if you count these up, you're going to see that there's 3 out of 16. Let's continue. The dark green means the other dominant allele, which in this case is the big R, is expressed instead. So again, it's that 3 out of 16. Let's finish this off. The dark yellow means no dominant alleles, kind of an orangey color here on my computer, is present. And there's only 1 out of 16, which of course, plug that into a calculator and see what percentage that is. Only 1 out of 16 exhibit both the phenotypically recessive traits, white flower and wrinkled seeds. Now this classic 9-3-1 ratio that is created, 9-3-3-1, that is created by a heterozygous being crossed with a heterozygous. This is a classic genetics radio, ratio. Uh, it's useful to understanding, so you don't end up having to write out a 16 square Punnett squares for every double heterozygous problem that you're given. You can still go through this process. In fact, it's important to practice this, but it's also important to understand what these ratios mean and that these are repeatable. And Mendel did see all of this stuff. Okay, let's see what we learn next.